My name is Chelsea Pike and I am the Education Coordinator at Snow Lab. Snow Lab is Canada's underground research facility studying neutrinos and dark matter located on the traditional territory of the Atikamishing and Anishinaabek. Today we're going to be building a cloud chamber. Many of you may have asked yourselves at some point, why does Snow Lab have to go two kilometers underground for their experiments that are studying outer space? We study neutrinos and dark matter. These are teensy tiny invisible particles that come from outer space. They're very, very weakly interacting. They don't interact with light at all and they very rarely interact with matter. In fact, there's trillions of neutrinos passing right through our bodies every single second and they can even pass right through the earth reaching our detectors two kilometers underground. As for dark matter, well, nobody has ever detected it yet. These are both very tricky little particles to detect. Also on the surface of the Earth, there's something called cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are subatomic particles that are raining down on the Earth. When they enter our atmosphere, they create a secondary shower of subatomic particles. These particles would interact with our detectors and mask the signal the scientists are looking for. And so trying to listen for a neutrino or dark matter on the surface of the Earth would be like trying to listen for a pin drop at a rock concert. Today, we're going to be building a cloud chamber. A cloud chamber was one of the very first ever particle detectors. It was invented in the early 1900s by a Scottish physicist named Charles Wilson. Wilson was actually trying to study cloud formation and accidentally invented a particle detector. He later won a Nobel Prize for his work and there's also a second Nobel Prize associated with the cloud chamber. So to build a cloud chamber, let's get started. We need a few things. First, we need an aquarium or other type of clear container you can see through. Inside the aquarium, we have black felt and we've used some magnets to attach it, but you can attach it however you like. Then we're going to need a bottom tray that we're going to be holding our dry ice. On top of that, we will put a black sheet of metal. And then our ingredients, we need dry ice. Dry ice as a safety precaution, it's minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. And so we need to wear thick leather gloves to handle it, as well as wear safety glasses. We're going to be using 99% isopropyl alcohol, but anything over 90% should work for your experiment. That is something that only adults should handle and you need to wear glasses and gloves to do so. Finally, we just need a light source. We're gonna be shining that inside to be able to see the particle tracks inside. So let's get started on it. First, I will put on my PPE. And the first step says to saturate the felt with the isopropyl alcohol. I'm also working in a large room that is a well ventilated space because this can create quite a lot of odors. I'm just going to pull out this bin to pour off any excess. Next, I'm going to grab our dry ice and pour it into our reservoir base right here. So I'm wearing my leather gloves for this and I'm going to make sure it's spread out in one even layer across the bottom. Now listen carefully for this part. I'm putting the black sheet of metal on top of the ice. The sound that you're hearing is from the room temperature metal contacting with the minus 78.5 degree dry ice. The sound that you're hearing is the ice sublimating when it makes contact with that ice, going from solid into a gas. The next step is to invert our aquarium onto the metal sheet and wait about 10 to 15 minutes 
for the alcohol to evaporate and create a cloud on top of the metal. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. I've turned off all the lights and closed the blinds and I've got a second camera recording over here. So let's make some observations. If you see any long straight tracks, those are likely a high energy electron or a muon. If you see any tracks that are kind of zigzaggy or curly-whirly, those are more likely an electron or a positron. And finally, the short, wide tracks that you see, especially near the edges of the container, those are alpha particles. So how does this all work? The felt at the top soaked with alcohol allows alcohol to evaporate into the container. When it reaches the bottom where that black piece of metal is sitting on the dry ice, it cools, creating a cloud. Then, when a charged particle, like an electron, a muon, or an alpha passes through, it rips an electron from those different gas molecules. This is enough to trigger a condensation process, and little droplets of alcohol vapor form, and that's the tracks that we're seeing. The tracks will differ in size, shape, and length, depending on what type of particle is passing through. These particles that you're seeing here, that's the rock music I was talking about earlier when I said it would be really, really hard to hear a neutrino because it's like a pin drop at a rock concert. So by going two kilometers underground, using shielding around our experiments, and using radiologically clean materials to build the experiments, we're able to keep these types of particles out of the detectors, allowing us to hear the very, very quiet neutrino or dark matter. For more information on how to build your own cloud chamber, check out our instructions on our education and outreach page. Happy sciencing!